hello and welcome back to my channel thank you for stopping by today if this is your first time checking out my videos you're highly welcome please subscribe if you're yet to subscribe and also give this video a thumbs up so in today's tutorial i'm showing you how, how to make the dress on the thumbnail a short dress with a ruffle starting from the hip line and it's going to be a double um layered ruffle with bishop's collar and a puff sleeve so i'll draft out my main bodies on a paper so that it will be visible and i'm drafting the front and the back on the same paper so my zipper allowance for this um, top is 1.5 inches and all my measurements will start from the zipper allowance line so i'll go ahead and rule out my shoulder line which is also the start line on this line i'll take my shoulder slope using three inch eight inches standard for shoulder slope at the eight inches point i came down by one inch and i connected to the three inches point then also on this start line which is also my shoulder line i would impute half of my shoulder measurement which is seven inches so from that seven inches i'll come down by seven inches seven inches is half of my round arm hole my round arm hole circumference is 14 inches so i came down by seven inches which is half of that and i'm connecting to my shoulder measurement on the shoulder line i'll also go ahead and measure out all my vertical measurements so from the shoulder line to nine inches is my boss point line to 15.5 inches is my half uh, my waistline and I also noted my hip line so I'm repeating this measurement again so that when I roll I would have a straight line and I'm going to connect the points I've made into straight lines so to make my armhole curve I would impute quarter of my bust measurement on the chest line and then I would measure the line what I have from the shoulder slope from the shoulder slope to the chest line i would measure what i have and divide that into two i'll find the midpoint of that and from that midpoint i came in by half an inch for my front armhole curve so i'd connect from the chest line to the half inch i came in by and then to the shoulder slope that is for the front armhole and for the back armhole i'll connect from the chest line to the midpoint of the vertical line i have so that's it for the armhole curve so on the chest line i also added 1.5 inches seam allowance to the quarter of the bust measurement i've already added then on the waistline i would impute seven inches which is quarter of my waist measurement plus one inch for that and i added extra 1.5 inches size seam allowance then on the hip line I would impute quarter of my hip measurement plus 1.5 inches seam allowance so i'll connect all these points together from the chest line to the waistline and from the waistline i would use a curve ruler to connect to the hip line the measurements on the hip line so after the hip line i have added my joining allowance of one inch you can add one inch or whatever you want to use for your joining allowance now my nipple to to draw out my dart i'm imputing half of my nipple to nipple measurement that is my bust span measurement half of it i imputed that on the bust, bust point line the waistline and on the hip line and connected these points together so on the waistline on this vertical line i just ruled i will take half inch that on both sides of it so for the front bodies i would come down from the boss point line by one inch and connect this half inch on the waist up towards this one inch i came down by and from the hip line i came up by two and a half inches so i would connect the darts from the waist to this two and a half inches i came up by then for the back darts the back that usually starts one inch below the chest line or nine inches standard you can use the standard so for this tutorial i'll use the standard so my dart for the back would stop would start from the nine inches um from the shoulder okay and then stop the same place two and a half inches before the hip line just like the front that so for my neckline 
I'm, I'm making a bishop scholar. So for my neckline, I will take a neck width of 2.75 inches and a neck depth of 2.75 inches for the front neckline. So you can make yours up to 3 by 3, 3 inches by 3 inches, but I'm working with a small size. So you can decide to make 3 inches by 3 inches or use the same 2.75 by 2.75. And for the neck depth in front, I came down by 1 inch. The neck width with the front and the back are, are the same. So I would I'm using red pen to, to indicate the armhole for the back and also the neckline for the back. So that's the part we'll cut out first um, before cutting out the front, um, the bodies for the front. So I'll go ahead and add half inch joining allowance on the shoulder for joining the two shoulders together. So I've taken half inch. You can take whatever allowance you use. If it's three quarter inch, you go ahead and take that. So to avoid zipper bulge on the waistline on the zipper allowance, I came in by half inch. And this half inch, I'm connecting it towards the chest line and towards down towards the hip line. So I'll go ahead and measure, remeasure 1.5 inches from this half inch I came in by and connect it back to the zipper allowance. Okay. So this is to eliminate zip bulge. So because of these half inches I removed, I would add extra half inch on the, my measurements by the side, the um, waistline. So this is just for the back part. This addition I made is just for the back part. So I connected to the chest line and down to the hip line. So this addition is only affecting the back parts. Okay, so I'll go ahead and, and cut out my pattern. So I'll cut out the neckline and the armhole for the back first and then use it to cut out my back piece. So I've cut out my back piece and the lining as well. So I cut two pieces for the back and two pieces for the lining. So now I would go ahead and fold in my my zipper allowance or trim it off so i'm trimming off the zipper allowance because i do not need that and also the armhole for the front and the neckline i've cut that out i also cut out that half inches i added by the waist for the back part so now i'll put my fabric on fold this is the front part so it will be cut on fold so my fabric will be on fold and i'll use it um up the pattern to cut out my fabric so i have done that i have cut out my lining piece and my main piece as well so now i will just transfer my darts on pattern i'm just just transferring them back to my main fabric i'll do that for the, the front and the back pieces and the lining pieces as well and then i'll go and sew in these darts so i'll hold in the darts for the lining and the main piece and I will then use the lining to turn the main piece by the sides. I won't turn the neckline for this top because I'm adding a collar to it. So I would place my lining and my main fabric right sides facing each other. And I would use quarter or half inch to hold them by the sides to turn um, the sides. Okay. So I've sewn in the darts. I've sewn in the darts for the lining and I've turned and the main fabric and I've turned them the sides so what i'm going to do next will be to join them by the shoulders remember i added half inch joining allowance so i'll use that allowance to join the front and the back by the shoulder so how i will join i'll use main fabric to main fabric and lining to lining right sides facing each other i'll join and also hold them by the side using the side seam allowance i left for it so on my lining piece, I would uh, make a basic short sleeve. I'm using a cap height of 3.25. Okay. So if you don't know how to make a short sleeve, a basic short sleeve, I'll drop a link in the description box. So the sleeve length I'm working with is 7 inches. Okay. And the sleeve opening I'm working with 9 inches. So that's half of that since my sleeve is on fold will be 4.5 inches and to that I'm going to add one and a half inches size seam allowance. So I'm making a basic um, short sleeve on my lining piece and I've cut the two um, for the two sleeves together. 
so on my main fabric i folded a long fabric i have a length of about 11 inches and a width of about 17 inches now this, this line is going to serve as my baseline so from that line i came down by two inches okay and i took a length of um, 14 inches so i'm going to pleat remember i said i'm making a puff sleeve so i'm making a curve as you see me do a slight curve for the armhole and for the length of what i need i'm going to add extra three inches three to four inches to what i have on my basic sleeve i want my sleeve length to be seven inches so i'm adding extra three inches to that making it 10 inches so on my lining on my line i had seven inches of length on my main fabric i have 10 inches of length so i decided to reduce what i have for my sleeve width so i'm going to reduce that to 12 inches i would reduce that to 12 inches okay so for my sleeve opening on my sleeve opening i'm going to peel 12 inches remember that this fabric is on fold so whatever measurement i'm imputing that means double of the measurement when it's opened so i'm connecting and i'll go ahead and cut out the fabric the main fabric the sleeve okay so i'll just cut out my sleeve i want to cut the two sleeves yeah so i folded, folded another fabric and i'll place that underneath what i've just marked out and cut out the two sleeves two together so now i have my the um, lining part of the sleeve so how i would, would join this i would open up the sleeves i'll open them to the right sides right sides facing each other so i would go and pleat with the right sides facing each other i would pleat the main fabric on the lining or the hem parts so i'll do that and show you what i have so i've done that i've pleated the main fabric to the lining you see what i have so how i'm going to close the sides i would fold them also right sides facing inside inward just as i place them i'll go and sew the one and a half inches side seam allowance i left as you can see i've sewn them so what i'll do now will be to pleat the upper part to the lining part the main sleeve i'll pleat the upper part to the main part and then attach it um, to the gown so i have also cut out you know we're going to add ruffles i've cut out ruffles i have long strip that i've cut out i cut it out by multiplying the hip circumference by 2.5 so you can multiply as much as you want and i have two of that one is two and a half inches the length of one is 10 inches and the other length is um 7.5 inches is two and a half inches shorter than the longer one so I've, i'm going to join this long strip that I've, I've hemmed the lower parts of these strips i've cut so i would go and join them together with a straight stitch before i then pleat them to the gown so as you can see i've joined them by the shoulder and i've also joined the sides the sides okay so what i will do next will be to pleat what i have my ruffles i've joined them the two steps the two layers i've joined them together so i'll go ahead and pleat all round i'll fold this you can decide to gather or pleat but i'm going to pleat mine all round the um lower parts right sides facing each other i would pleat like i'm demonstrating i'll go and pleat till i get to the other end of my um gown so i have joined the ruffles and i've also attached my sleeve this is what i have the dress is coming into form okay so at the back i would have to attach my zipper to the back i will do that after attaching the bishop's um collar so how i will attach my zip will be to sew one inch before the ruffles the part where i have the ruffles i will sew that part closed and then attach the zipper so before attaching the zipper i would have to attach my collar so i would fold i would either fold um, the neckline like this and measure what i have okay which will be half of all my neckline circumference okay or i would measure from one end from one zipper allowance end to the other end so 
this measurement for the neckline the zipper allowance is inclusive so when i measured out all around this the measurement i have is 19.5 inches so i'll go ahead and draft out my collar so i would rule this line this vertical line that will serve as the center front and i'm also ruling a horizontal line that will act as my base line from which i'll take all my measurements so on this horizontal line i'm going to divide 19.5 i had i measured so i'll divide that into two and i have 9.75 inches so i'll measure i'll take out that measurement starting from the line that acts as the center line i'll measure seven points 9.75 inches and i'll also repeat that measurement um at another point so that i can rule a straight line and i'll connect these two points together so this line i just ruled would act as the center back so from the center back line i would impute 4.5 inches which is half of my back neck line and i'm connecting these two points together so from the center front line i'm going to come up by half an inch and then i'll use my curve rule and connect it to the center line the line i have at the middle okay as you see me do so from this point now i came up by i'm going to measure 1.25 inches all round you can see how i'm taking my measurement and this is the height of my collar i want it to be 1.25 inches so you can decide to make yours one inch or 1.5 depending on what you want so i'll have to cut my collar on fold and i'll cut two pieces so i'm just labeling them but before cutting out i've decided to add my seam allowance on the pattern so i would be adding half inch up for joining the two pieces you know i said i'll cut two pieces for joining and turning the neck part and also two um 0 0.5 inch down for attaching to the neckline so i'm adding my allowance all around half inch all around i do not add any allowance to the center front because i'm cutting that part on food so for the back part since there is a zipper i would also need to add um half to quarter inch for turning that part which i did when I, I, I transferred to my fabric so i've taken my measurements and for the tightening of the neck part i came in from the upper part of the center front by half an inch and i connected to the lower part as you see me do so this is it for the collar I would drop a link in the description box where I made another uh, bustier top with a collar where I explained very well. So you can check out that video in case you do not understand from what I'm saying here. I explained very well in that video. But you can also watch that and it will or might be helpful. So I'll cut out my pattern and then use that to cut out my fabric. So my fabric will be on fold and I will fold on bias. I would cut two pieces for my collar. So I've gone ahead to, to cut out the collar, two pieces, and on one I ironed gum stay to it. I would place them right sides facing each other and I would sew the upper parts using the half inch seam allowance I left and I also sew in quarter inch on the zipper parts, the outer parts. So I'll do that and turn and iron. So I've done that already. What I'm going to do now will be to attach to the neckline. And so I notched the center part of the collar and the center parts of the neckline. And I'm pinning one side to the neckline. I'm sewing from the wrong side, the wrong side of the um, of the dress. So I'm pinning the parts with the gum stay first attaching it to, to the, the neckline from the wrong side so i would pin all around, around and so using half inch seam allowance because that is the allowance i left for attaching the collar to the neckline so after pinning i would sew down just the way i pinned so i would use the other side i'll flip to hold in my seam to top stitch on the first seam i made so i have attached the collar i've also attached the sleeves and the ruffles i've added my zipper to the back and this is what the gown looks like so thank you for watching 
please if you enjoyed watching this video give it a thumbs up subscribe if you're yet to subscribe and also click on the notification bell to be notified every time i upload a new video thank you for watching and see you in my next video bye